Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm Mr. Sanaullah Khan, lecturer in computer science, Institute of Computing Cohort, University of Science and Technology Cohort. I'm the instructor of course Data Science CS325. Today I want to deliver lecture number 10A. And the topic is Artificial Neural Networks 2 because uh, one portion is already discussed in the lecture number 10. Today we will discuss Artificial Neural Intelligence second portion. This is the uh, recommended reference books uh, for this topic. This is the scenario of Artificial Neural Network with some input sets given and then some hidden layer process these inputs and provides the outputs. So this is the outline of the today topic, Artificial Neural Networks. We have already discussed in lecture 10. Components and uh, field forward networks, uh, forward propagations, back propagation and then a summary. So what is Artificial Neural Network? A neuron collects a weighted sum of the inputs, adds a bias and then decides whether it should be activated or not. So this this is called these inputs. Here vectors are added, and this sum is uh, checked, and then the activation function is used, and then produce the output. Neuron is activated when the correlation between the input and a pattern theta exceeds some threshold b. Here the neuron, here the sum is calculated, and then the um, activation function is used. When these exceed the patterns, then the um, some threshold B, then the activation function is activated. So why threshold uh, theta t threshold multiplied by x plus bias value or r theta t x plus b. So r call here r is called this activation function. So, this is the another scenario. Combination of mini neuron is called this um, neural networks. Here we can say this is the neuron two. This is the hidden layer. Again, this is the neuron. This is the output. So the building blocks of neural network are the neurons. This is the important thing that without neuron, neural network is nothing. So in the technical system, we also refer, uh, refer. We also refer uh, to them as unit or node. We can say this neuron is unit or node. Basically, each neuron receives some inputs from many other neurons change its internal state which is called this activation based on the current input send one output signal to many other neuron possible including its inputs neuron recurrent networks so information is transmitted as a series of electric impulses so called spike the frequency and phase of each spike encodes the information in biological system one neuron can be connected to as many as 10,000 other neurons. Usually, a neuron receives its information from other neurons as in confined area, so it is called respective field. So, what is neuron? The fundamental signaling uh, computational unit, synapse. The connection between neurons is called the synapses. Layers, neurons are organized into layers we can discuss uh, in coming section extremely complex around 10 power uh, 11 neurons in the brain each with 10 power 4 connections so this is called neuron x inputs this is called hidden layer 1 this is called hidden layer 2 this is called hidden layer l and then output generated so potential layer feed uh, forward default networks here uh, x value is combined then pull, uh, combined and transfer to the hidden layer 1 
here some operation is performed and then transfer to hidden layer 2 same and then transform to hidden layer l and then combines uh, creates uh, using activation function to create an output <coughs> so what is mean by feed forward networks in this network flow of information is unidirection means from uh, input to output so a unit node used to send information to another unit node that does not receive any information also no feedback loop are present in this because it is a uh, forward uh, networks all the used in the recognition of a patterns as they contain fixed uh, inputs and outputs this is the example of artificial uh, feed forward neural networks So these are the first layer, input x layer, uh, hidden variable h1 layer, and this is called as hidden variable h2 layer. These are the output layer, uh, hidden l layer, and then output y layer. So representation inputs, hidden variable uh, layer are weights, hidden layer output layers. So input take inputs from the other neuron then some hidden layer process these neuron and then uh, output layer generates some output like this this is the in image inputs uh, represent as a vector some require some pre-processing example subtract mean normalize 2 minus 1 1 so this image is uh, inputs and their pixel will be given uh, to the neural network and then produce the output <coughs> so output layer this is the hidden layer final and then output layer so regression y is equal to wt uh, weight with uh, threshold and then hidden layer plus bias values so linear unit non non no non linearity output layer multidimensional regression wth plus b linear units no non linearity binary classification alpha wth plus b only two values this is called as multidimensional correspond to using logistic regression on H multi-class classification will be also detected from the artificial uh, neural network soft mix uh, is used where Z is equal to WTH plus Z so corresponding to using multi-class logistic regression on H this is HI and this is H plus 1 Hidden layer, neuron take weights linear combination of the previous layer. layer. This is hidden layer. This take new uh, inputs from the previous layer. And this is a forward layer. This input takes from the previous hidden layer and then their weight. So can think of outputting one value for the next layer. Hidden layer R WTX plus B where r is the activation function and there are basically uh, many activation function while some typical activation function use as a threshold where z is equal or greater than or equal to 0 sigmoid 1 over 1 plus x uh, uh, e exponent of minus z tangent tangent of 2 delta 2 sigma 2 z minus 1 these, these are the formula of the activation function each hidden layer each node is contain their own activation functions so y seg segment activation function y <coughs> consider a neuron sigma weight multiplied by input plus bias this neuron is the combination of inputs multiplied by weight plus bias values 
Now the value of y can be anything ranging from minus infinity to the positive infinity. So the neuron really does not know the bounds of the values. So how do we decide whether the neuron should fire or not? It depends upon the activation functions. Activation function threshold f the value of y is above a certain value declare it activated let's suppose we declare that if the value of y is greater than 0 0.5 then uh, activated function will be uh, activated otherwise not activated simplest equation but not appreciate for modeling complex function and this, this is the drawbacks of the threshold activation function that it is not used for modeling or complex functions so it's going smooth while it's become to zero then then it's fire the activations another activation function is linear <coughs> a straight line function where activation is proportional to n port so a is equal to c of x not appreciated for modeling complex non-linear function best but uh, for complex non-linear function it is not suitable sigmoid function if the value of y is above a certain value declare it activated so a is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus 6 if you notice toward either end of the sigmoid function the y value tends to respond very last to change in x so it's going like this it's not giving loss while in linear its uh, threshold is directly going toward this so what does that mean the gradient at the region is going to be small it gives rise to a problem of vanishing gradiness a tangent a hyperbolic tangent if similar to segment but it is a tangent hyperbolic x 2 power 1 plus e power minus 2x minus 1 it is scaled sigmoid function what are the disadvantage activation function yeah relu rectified linear unit the relu function gives an output x if x is positive and zero otherwise it provides output x when the x will is positive and zero otherwise so maximum zero of x it is non-linear function and is capable of modeling complex function. The range of relu is 0 to positive infinity. So it ensures parity of the activations. Because of horizontal line in relu for negative x, the gradient can do toward 0. So for activation in that region of relu, gradient will be 0 because of which the weights will not get adjusted during descent dang relo problems leak relo leaky relo is a variation of the relo function and attempts to solve the dang relo problem it's equal to a of x maximum x0 plus 0 0.01 minimum x0 forward propagations it is a fully connected feed forward neural network so L layer and some neuron in each layer. This is the L layer and some neuron. This is a neuron. This is a neuron and so each layer. The activation of the neuron in layer I is stored in an activation column vector AI. This is the activation function AI. Here activation function will be applied. Here activation is applied and so on. The connection from the neuron in layer i minus 1 to the layer i are stored in a weighted matrix wi here they store the weighted function and the bias of the each neuron is stored in a bias column vector b1 this is called this bias sometimes it's not needed and sometimes we use it for simple forward pass we have that a power l sigma w l a l minus 1 plus b l so this is a power l minus 1 this is their weight this is an input they are multiplied and this is the hidden layer 
so w multiplied by a l i minus 1 is equal to z so this is uh, this is the uh, x inputs and this is the a i or a l and this is the their words at each neurons so after that a i minus 1 a r a l minus 1 and then w l and then a l so a l plus 1 and so on the formula for calculating nth elements of the output vector is in the final layer here for output in this layer formula is used a power n l sigma sigma m w m uh, n m l and this is the words sigma j uh, w k 2 this is the weight of second and all these weights are multiplied and here the, this formula is used error estimation the root mean square error RMAC is frequently used measure of the difference between values predicted by a model or an estimator and the value actually absorbed from the thing being model or estimated. How to adjust weight in the forward propagation after each iteration weights should be adjusted to minimize the error. So all possible weights and second one is the back propagation to come back and check the weights and then adjust it. So what is back propagation? Back propagation is an example of supervised learning is used at each layer to minimize the error between the layer's response and the actual data. The error at each hidden layer is an average of the evaluated error. <coughs> hidden layer networks are trained this way. So N is a neuron, NW is a one of N's input weights, N out is N out, nw is equal to nw plus delta nw means they are weighted so delta n n out multiplied by 1 minus n out multiplied by n error factor so n error factor is equal to n expected output minus n actual output this work only for the last layer as we can know the actual output and the expected output so these things is presented diagrammatically and mathematically now. So big propagation is common method for training a neural network. The goal of big propagation is to optimize the weights or to adjust the weights so that neural network can learn how to correctly map arbitrarily input to output. So this is the weight one how it will be just as weight 2, weight 3. Algorithm start from initial point do forwards propagation from uh, layer previous to next layer. Calculate the error signal of the final layer L by obtaining the gradient of the cost function with respect to the output of the network. So do backward if the error is too large Calculate the error signal of the neuron in each layers. Calculate the derivative of the cost function with respect to the weight. Calculate the derivative of the cost function with respect to the biases as well. Update the weights. So this is example. This is an input and this is a bias. This is a weight. For this input weight 1, weight 2, weight 3 and weight 4. And this is the hidden layer and this is the output layer output 1 and output 2 and this is the another words so first of all this input and weight are multiplied and the result are submitted to h1 again this is sub multiplied with weight 2 and the result are submitted to weight 2 here some uh, function is used to combine uh, this result and this one result also combine the bias result same is the case for the a2 Again, here some activation function is used and then multiplied by weight 5 to output and same is the case for other. Simple example, a neural network with two inputs, two hidden neurons, two output neurons, two inputs, two hidden and two output. Additionally, the hidden and output neuron will include a bias values as well.
So a neural network with two inputs, two hidden neurons, two output neurons. Additionally, the hidden and output neuron will include a bias. So in order to, to have some number to work with, here are the initial weights, the bias in training inputs, outputs. This is the uh, inputs. This is the inputs and this is the initial weight. Uh, 0 0.15, 0 0.20, 0 0.25, 0 0.3. Same here. After that, this is the uh, another weight. This is the weight six, and this is the weight seven and eight. This is the bias values. Finally, output is 0 0.01, and second output is 0.99. So, network H1. How we can find out the value of H1? So value of H1 is equal to weight 1 means weight 1 point 0.15 multiplied by inputs i1 plus weight 2 point 0.20 multiplied by value i2 plus bias value which is 0.35 multiplied by 1. So the result is weight 1 0 0.15 okay multiplied by input 1 0 0.05 plus weight to 0 0.2 multiplied by input to 0 0.1 plus uh, weight uh, bias value 0 0.35 multiplied by 1 so this gave us result is this so this is the uh, inputs in net h1 here these inputs are coming and then combined after that we are use sigmoid function on h1 so output of h1 is equal to 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus net h1 so which is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e power this which gave us result so the h1 finally gave us result 0 0.5932 same is the case for the output of h2 this is called this uh, forward pass So same uh, for net zero one. We repeat this process for the output layer neuron using the output from the hidden layer neuron as input. So net one, net one zero one means output of this will will be weight five multiplied by output h one which is already calculated previously plus weight six multiplied by output of h two plus bias 2 multiplied by 1 so weight 5 is equal to 0 0.4 multiplied by uh, output h1 already calculated this is output of h1 0 0.593 and this is out of h2 so output h1 plus 0 0.545 weight 6 multiplied by output h2 plus 0 0.6 multiplied by 1 is equal to this so this is the net uh, value of net 0 1 now after using the sigmoid function output 0 1 is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus net 0 1 is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus uh, 1.1 1 .1, which gave us 0 0.75 result of output 1 so output 2 is the same case we can also calculate for the output now calculate the total error we can now calculate the error for each output neuron using the squared error function and sum them to get the total error so total error is equal to summation 1 over 2 target minus target uh, output and minus output whole square or we can say predicted output minus actual output so for example the target output for uh, output 1 is 0 0.01 which is already calculated but the neural network suppose 0 point gives result 0 0.75 which is calculated by the previously therefore the its error is 1 divided by 2 target 0 0.01 minus output 0 0.01 whole square or 0 0.01 minus uh, which is this is the target value minus this is the uh, output network 0 0.75 which gave us this this is the difference between the predicted and actual so repeating this process for O2 output 2 remembering that the target is 0 0.99 we get this is the output 
so total error is equal to error 1 plus error 2 combine this so this is the total error 0 0.29 now what we can do on the this total error so our goal with bay progression is to update each of the weight in the network so that they cause the actual output to be closer the target output thereby minimizing the error of each output neuron in the network is whole so now we are coming back uh, from this side to this this is the big forward propagation so output layer consider w5 this is the w5 we want to know how much a change in w5 affects the total error s is known as change in e total divided by change in e uh, w weight so by applying the chain rule we know that change of e total divided by change of weight w is equal to change of e total divided by out change of output 0 1 uh, result of this multiplied by change of output 0 1 divided by change of net 0 1 network value multiplied by change of net 0 1 divided by change of uh, weight 5 so <laughs> change of net 0 and divided by change of weight 5 this is the uh, result this is the target this is the error e0102 so multiplied by this now we can uh, calculate this values first how much does the total error change with respect to the output so 1 over 2 target uh, 0 1 minus out 0 1 whole square plus 1 over 2 target 2 for both for second target 1 for uh, for first for second so e total divided by change in e output 0 1 2 multiplied by 1 over 2 target 0 1 minus output 0 1 whole square minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 plus 0 so after using this formula we get 0 0.74 change is uh, necessary uh, for the uh, change in weight next how much does the output of uh, output 1 change with respect to its total net inputs so output uh, 0 1 is, is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e power net 0 1 so change in output 0 1 divided by change in net 0 1 is equal to out 0 1 1 minus out 0 1 which is already calculated out 0 1 multiplied by 1 minus out 0 1 which gave us 0 0.1806 so after that finally how much does the total net input sub 0 1 change with respect to uh, weight 5 so net 0 1 weight 5 multiplied by output h1 plus wh1 w weight 6 multiplied by this so we said that the weight 5 consider it as 1 we change uh, 0 0.40 in this uh, in the with replace 0 0.40 with 1 multiplied by output h1 multiplied by weight 5 1 minus 1 means this is the weight 6 so after calculation it gave 0 0.59 values putting all together this is the result of this multiplied by this and this it gave 0 0.082 so what does it mean update the weights to decrease the error we then subtract this value from the current weight optionally multiplied by some learning rate e etc which will be 0 0.5 means that we have we will multiply this value with the current weight and then some error rate normally error rate will be considered as uh, 0 0.5 so weight 5 plus increase weight 5 minus n multiplied by sigma e total divided by sigma weight 5 0 0.4 minus 0 0.5 multiplied by this it gives result this so weight 6 will be increased like this and weight 7 will be increased 
0.5 in weight L weight will be increased by 0.56 so we can repeat this process to get the new weight weight 6 7 and weight 8 this process continues until all the weights are adjusted means if weights are not adjusted here then we can also pro apply this process here and adjust the weight 1, 2, 3 and 4 as well so number of neurons if we increase the number of neurons uh, then it gave us higher accuracy but it is slower risk of overfitting is more likely uh, another memorizing rather than understanding the network will be useless with new problems because on training base it will give highly accuracy while on testing it may not be gives a high accuracy if it is a few neuron then the accuracy will be lower and ability to learn at all optimal numbers data representation usually input output data needs pre-processing again picture like then pixel intensity, uh, contact, limits, uh, adaptive histogram, normalization is needed and take some pattern will be required. So uh, pre-processing process is more generally used. Size of training set, no one fits all the formula. Where fitting can occur if good training set is not chosen. Weird, what cons constitutes a good training set? Samples must represent the general populations means uh, sample with, uh, with population will be selected sample must contain member of each class sample in each class must contain a wide range of variation or noise effect noise effects the size of the training set is replaced to the number of hidden neurons application area function approximation including time series prediction and modeling Classification problem including patterns in sequence recognition, novelty detection and sequential decision making, radar system, face identification, handwritten text recognition. Data processing include filterings, clustering blind source separation and compression, data mining, email spamming, spam filtering, etc. Advantages adapt to unknown situation. Power pool, it can model complex functions, ease of use, learns by example and very little user demands specific spots needed. Disadvantage, forgots, forgets some neurons, not exact, provides exact solution, large complexity of the network structure is required. Summary, so in this we discuss the neural network or emission of the biological neural network but much simpler ones. The computing would have a lot of gain from neural networks. Their ability to learn by example make them very flexible and powerful. Furthermore, there is need to devise uh, an algorithm in order to perform a specific task. Neural networks also contribute directly to area of research such as neurology and psychology. Uh, they are regularly used to model parts of living organization and to investigate the internal mechanism of the brain. Many factor effect the performance of ANNs such as the transfer function, size of training sample, network topology, weight adjustment, algorithm, etc. These are the reference uh, used for this uh, topic also. Uh, question, try to understand how does each neuron work in ANN? What is back propagation? So a neuron receives input from many other neurons, changes its internal state activation based on the current input, sends uh, one end output signal to many others and so on. Thank you for watching the video.